What's up guys, CJ here for Kung Fu Night. It's time for more It's Always Sunny. We're on Season 8, Episode 7. Last time we had the Charlie's Mom Has Cancer episode, or she actually didn't have cancer because all that was absolute bullshit. Uh, we had P. Diddy last episode uh, cameo in, and he played in a funk band. They were playing some George Clinton. He was in... I was saying herbalist, or no, it was a doctor that he was impersonating, but he just managed the nursery for the church? Right, exactly, because Charlie and Max's mom are apparently so chill and uh, having a good time living together that they hopped in their car and ran down a statue that was in front of the church. Uh, they were going to raise money for the statue. Charlie wanted them to raise money for his mother, who he thought had cancer, but does not. Yeah, fun episode. Leave your comments down below. Links in the description for Patreon tiers. You have full and uncut reactions over on the Patreon side. But I'm not going to waste too much time. I'm going to get right into it. There is one man who can save this company. It's Founder. He's a Neanderthal. An animal. Frank. Yeah. Bring in the Warthog. <laughs> Get the phone! Hello. Is this the Warthog? I ain't heard that name in a long time. <laughs> oh, the face. It's like, it's like he's cross-eyed almost. Wow, okay. So the Warthog is Frank's old nickname when he founded I didn't know I didn't catch the name of the company but yeah this part this man's probably an animal man when it comes to business we'll see we're gonna see it firsthand out here three two one oh boom 24 hours is up the found wallet is ours Let's pop this bad boy open and see what we've won mr <laughs> Brian Lefebvre from Quebec oh what's this Phillies tickets huh for today check hey, your breath right <laughs> And when you shake your hands, Charlie, look at look at make these sure two. Hands are bone dry. dry. Guys, quick announcement: I'm gonna be popping these looking clean. eggs in the fridge here. Pretty so spiffy. Spoiled. Do not touch them; they are ours. Also, did they get the eggs? I think they were trying to eat the eggs that were outside of their window. It sounds like they got a hold of them. But yeah, look at these two. They are they're looking fresh right now. Charlie with the slick back hair. You know what? Uh, I need to get myself a pair of suspenders, bro, because I think suspenders are still fresh, man, to this day. I know it's not as common to see them, but. I think if you can rock it, you can rock it. Some scumbag company is trying to take over the business that I founded, and I'm not going to stand for that. Yeah, no, we're not going to stand for that. Mm -mm. Frank's taking me under his wing. He's going to teach me how to swim with the sharks. While you guys are crunching numbers, we're going to be soaking up some sun at the Phillies game, courtesy of one Mr. Brian Lefebvre. <laughs> what are you going to do if he comes looking for it? Uh, tell him to suck a boner. Also didn't acknowledge the fact that it took all of 24 hours for them just to divvy up this man's wallet. That's their grace period. <laughs> oh, fine dining and baseball food. Hey. There's more. Oh, oh, free batteries. You're taking the bat. <laughs> Look at all these coasters. Now listen to me. The fact that we're in a box leads me to believe that there are definitely going to be other people coming here today, and they're probably going to be friends with this Lefebvre guy. Ah, uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Strategy. We don't want to get caught. Excuse me. Is one of you Brian Lefebvre? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, hi. And that must make you Prudence Lefebvre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, honey. Marriage? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and you are? Vic Vinegar, bodyguard. I don't shake. <laughs> I mean, we got all week to talk about business. <laughs> Who needs a beer? Oh, I do. I love a beer. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bitch, uh, you're working. For yeah. Me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you gotta drive too, stupid. Yeah. This will be fun, but what does Brian do? Like uh, that. That's the question. We didn't have a uh, get a whole lot of info. So the company ASAP. Also. There are too many minorities and women working here. What's up? With Whoa. That? Oh, that Different uh, time. Me, who, who is this man? Uh, right hand man. You got it? I mean, there's going to be some changes around here. You understand? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, kid. You mind if I take a look, see? Oh, no. Okay, yeah. uh, I, I think it's a paper jam. 
Man, there's the culprit. Oh, let me ask you a question. Did I just do your job for you? Did I, did I just do your job for you? <laughs> I guess so. You're fired. Get oh. out of here. Somebody had to go. Get out of the build-up and I love the build-up and the warthog noises. Start cutting the crust off this shit sandwich. That that went from so light just to absolutely devastating for that man and his his young career. Proposal, the I think closing a thirty-one is a pretty fair deal, don't right. you? Thirty-one. Well, you know, guys, the, these things tend to be a little complicated. Oh, I think you can do better. And I tell you what, I've seen better looking moose turds in Rick Moranis's backyard, ya hoosers. <laughs> Rick, Rick Moranis is a kid is Canadian a, too. I've heard. That, what the hell are you doing, D? We're Canadian. <laughs> You sound like a cartoon character. Guys, let's get out of here. Everybody's treating me like the help. Promote me to vice president. That way we can talk shop. Mac, these gentlemen are courting me for my business savvy. How's it going to reflect on me if I promote my bodyguard to VP after a two-minute conversation at a ball game? <laughs> it's not going to reflect on you at all because you're not Brian LeFevre. What does, what does Brian LeFevre do? Mac, I was gathering information so that I can more fully become this man. Look, look, this is about the thrill of wearing another man's skin. And being in control of his every single move, that's how you get off. <laughs> Don't you guys want to get off with me? <laughs> what? Don't you get off with me? Okay. We're gonna get off together. <laughs> how uh, that, oh, the line delivery is so good. So fucking it's good. Hey, if the TV show Dexter was back in its prime and it was more centered around comedy, his caricature, actually, it's not even a caricature, that's who he is. Dennis would be the perfect villain for Dexter to murder. Like, does anyone else see that? Like, that's just what I'm, that, that's what I'm seeing. It's just, it's comical, but it's creepy, and he needs to be stopped. You know what I'm saying? I'm just confused about one thing. Got me out of bed, you put me on a plane, rolled out the red carpet for, what was it, 31? Hey, get my coat. Let's get out of here. Uh, no, hold on a second, Lefebvre. Give us a shot. We will persuade you. Get ready for a great week. So, tell me the rundown for tomorrow, Charlie. Okay. We got an 8.30 appointment in the morning to play racquetball in these new outfits. Uh, then we're going to head over to Barney's. We're going to shop for Rolexes. Is Charlie reading right now? Is he reading? He's reading very well. Or is this from memory? Who pays for all this? What do you mean, who pays for it? The company pays for it. What do we build? What do we design? <laughs> you know, because I have some ideas well, that could really help the company. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. We don't build anything. Speaking <laughs> of which, want to eat sushi off of some Jap broad's tits? <laughs> oh my god. You know, that's a term that you don't hear too often. Like, I might not have heard that since I was like in elementary. All right, guys, listen. I just don't I hear it. Just up a couple of backstories here. So. Take a look at these cards. On the front, you're gonna find your biographical information. On the back, that's your emotional blueprint. Okay, just follow my lead, and I am gonna get you off in ways you never believed existed. Uh -uh. I'm in. Okay, FF, we have a surprise you are gonna love. We know exactly what you like. What is going Go on? The locker room, see for yourself. Oh, shit. Oh, hey. You must be Mr. Lefef? Uh, yeah, that's me. Surprise, I'm all yours. Oh no. I was told it'd just be one, but I can take both of you. I'm out of here. Huh. Wait, what? Dennis, are, are you gonna have sex with a tiny Asian boy? I'm gonna see how far I can go. I quit. You quit? Yes. Well, guess what, pal? You can't quit because you're fired, oh. Vic. You would think that w with what we know between these two, like it would be Mac that would be the one that's, you know, interested, but I guess Mac doesn't know yet, and I'm not supposed to know. So only the ones at the clubs? Yeah, you're a caddy. Clubs, this is a golf... Uh. <laughs> this man was taking his belts off and everything. That's a hell of a switcheroo. Good. Take your time. Okay. <laughs> this show is so clever, man. Again, they set you up. They serve it to you to perceive something. Oh, wow. They serve something... So you, they serve something on a silver platter for you to perceive, perceive it one way, then just flip it on its head immediately. I found out who the controlling shareholder of Atwater is. Brian Lefebvre. 
The, the wall they found? Holy shit. Yeah. He was probably there to see me. Dennis has been going around pretending to be him and stringing along the Wheeler guys. We keep the Wheeler guys off our asses, and we fix that water. Ah, welcome, uh, welcome. Uh, you bring us the great honor to join the, with us. What are you doing? What are you talking broken English for? Wait, wait, wait. I thought that's they could understand me better. Oh, let's, 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 my let's, God. Let's eat some sushi, and we'll talk mm -hmm. business later. Nice. Enjoy yourself. A few interesting facts about our city. Uh, there's been an abundance of crow eggs all around Philly. Uh, and their eggs, of course, are getting bigger as well. Perhaps our companies, uh, with this information, could find a way to create some products off these new information. Excuse us. You're fired. You're fired. Why? Because you're not getting it. You're out. I'll definitely have something to say about that, for sure. Maybe he'll go join up with Dennis and all them. Frank canned me. He did? Yeah! What a dick! I wish we could go into business together, you know? That would be, that yeah, would be well, good. Yeah, like you and sense. I, you and I understand each other. Ah. Hey, excuse me! Yeah, does the name Brian Lefebvre mean anything to you guys? Are you gonna sell or not? Guys, we are almost there. I promise you, we are so close. I want to welcome all of you Atwater investors, and especially our controlling shareholder, Mr. Brian Lefebvre. I'm very excited about your passion for the company, so let's get right down to business. There's something you all need to know about Atwater! In the video. Boom! What up? Are you ready for the best idea ever? Do you have money? Do you want even more money? <laughs> Nicholas Cage? Well, guess what? We've got a great idea for you. <laughs> Fight milk! Fight milk? <laughs> Dairy-based protein drink, four bodyguards, Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Bird. <laughs> so what's this got to do with that water? Oh no. Fight milk. So what's the news? Oh, yeah, right. Well, that's not Brian Lefebvre. That's what I thought he was gonna say. This is Brian Lefebvre. Came to the bar and I remember he had to take a piss. Yeah, he's having a couple drinks. And but Charlie okay. was in the bathroom cleaning it out. I was working, I'm like, dude, take it out to the alley. He forgot his wallet. Max like ID, please. Crackhead comes up to him and says, hey, man, you know, give me your money. He got stabbed a bunch around the abdomen and... Wow. Got sort of died. Dude. <laughs> he got his wow. Thing, this guy here, he's like, dude, get a fingerprint. And I hear, get a fingertip. And I chop his finger off really quick. <laughs> if Brian LeFleur is dead, then who the hell are these people? Just a couple of people who totally got off, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, and then he showed the finger. That was the big one. The dead finger got you off. That was the climax, really. I am really. so confused. Oh, my God. I don't, un yeah, I don't understand. It's mostly sexual. God damn you. Okay, you know what? I could have gotten some cash out of these men. I could have gotten a free pair of shoes, but no. You said, hang in there. I'll help you get off. All on my own to try and just get off <laughs> all by myself. I everything that I could. Anything. I don't understand why you couldn't get off. That's not my fault. Some women just don't know how. Well, oh, my look, God. I don't know what the hell's going on over there. But I can tell you something. There's so much here. There is something really palpable wonderful going on over here if i built this company with these hands this is a comp wait, wait excuse me i was done all right that's it it's over you can all go the company's gone or i something? stripped the company sold it to the chinks and they shut it down you can all <laughs> fired go. everybody you and goodbye i thought you loved the company i do but not more than money and i just made a shitload of it you get it yeah hey, <laughs> speaking of which tell me more about this crow team now that's a good name for it. <laughs> so with all of the dentist stuff, the best thing I the best thing I can surmise is that we know he likes attention. We know he said it was mostly sexual. He said it was two things that got him off, and it was the the video. And whenever everyone found out he was brought he he was impersonating Brian Lefebvre. Is there some I don't know condition or some way that he can, he can find like sexual gratification like through just that I, we know he's bonkers and everyone else is but like i truly do just want to understand this you know what i mean yeah patrons if y'all can clear up what the fuck is going on with him in the comments i'd appreciate that the scene with the locker room and the caddy was hilarious uh they set it up perfectly everything that the caddy did say just led you to believe that he was there to have sex with uh uh, with Dennis and you know willingly both of them 
you know, the two guys, the way they said it too, like, oh, we know what you like, you know, we got something in there for you, you know, that whole thing, it, it had implications to it too. Yeah, I like the Frank Warthog stuff too. Favorite scene with him this episode was whenever he fired uh, the kid that was working with the, the copier, the printer. You know, I find whenever they do linger in these scenes a little bit longer, just to kind of draw out the anticipation, more often than not, the payout comically is much more uh, gratifying, or you know, it, it, it's 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 a lot more hilarious when they, whenever they do that, right? Things don't always have to move a million miles an hour. Things don't always have to be as unclear as things seemed whenever Dennis was uh, going over his whole thing at the very end. Still, just what the fuck? Yeah, the Mac bodyguard stuff was funny too. You know, some of the usual stuff early in this episode, but. Uh, the the crow team and I think I think Frank was the first one to say it I didn't hear them say it earlier in the commercial or anything. I might have missed that But the crow teens. Yeah, that's right. The crow teen stuff was pretty hilarious I'm about to go to the gym once I finish this reaction, but that was really funny The max mannerisms and Charlie's attempt to impersonate him or copy him was funny as well I don't know just that gesture where he kind of holds his hands out and you know, I forgot what he said, but but that, that gesture just seemed, it seemed so fitting for, I guess, your, your gym bro type of dude, you know? And they just kept milking that, the whole commercial. <laughs> what do they say? It's like half milk or half, I forgot. I, I forgot what it was, but that, 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 works, that worked out nicely there. Dee was kind of on the back burner this episode, wasn't she? Didn't, what did she do? Brian Lefebvre died. This, this could be less worthy, right? You know, Frank, did he, I mean, he, he is liquidated the right term? He destroyed an entire company. And, you know, we opened up with a scene with, you know, maybe half people on this side of this business saying, don't bring the Warthog back, don't bring it back. When one or two people saying, we got to bring him back, we got no choice. Um, so Frank got one over on this whole company um, at Water. Um, so let's put Frank at the top of the list for now. We do have everyone, pretty much everyone in the gang that stole... Yeah, they, they picked up Frank, not Frank, they picked up Brian Lefebvre's uh, wallet and immediately started spending her in person. Yeah, they impersonated him is what they did. I'm sure they used some credit cards on the side that just wasn't focused on. You know they did. Come on. <laughs> uh, but we'll go but we'll go based on the evidence that we have, okay? Yeah, so we'll, we'll do that. Frank at the top of the list. Everyone pretty much participated in the stealing of his identity. Again, not not a not an important thing or anything, but Charlie was reading this episode and I, I noticed that. I thought that was pretty funny, but Charlie didn't do too much. Like, he doesn't have a lot of blood on his hands, even though he does, because he cut off a man's finger. What? He did do that, didn't he? <laughs> mm, is that list worthy? The man was dead, right? We'll do Frank, Dennis, D, Mac, and Charlie. Maybe, maybe we'll throw Charlie up there a little higher. I don't know. Yeah, it was kind of weird to cut off the dude's finger. So that's my list. Uh, let me know if you have a different list in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this reaction. Other comments, feel free to leave them below. Links in the description for Patreon. Tears. Full uncut reactions available over there. I'll catch you guys next time. All right. Peace.